Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography. Today you find me here in Clumber Park, which sits on the edge of the Sherwood Forest. Yes, the home of Robin Hood. And the reason I'm here is to photograph fungi and share that experience with you. Previously, about two years ago, I knew pretty much nothing about fungi. And so, in order to, to learn more about it, I made a short video which was a beginner's introduction into fungi in the UK and I'll leave a link for that at the end of this video um, so that you can have a look at that. Before we start, I just want to touch on um, safety. Uh, not all mushrooms are edible. Well, yeah, all mushrooms are edible, but some of them you can only eat them once. Um, difference between a mushroom and a toadstool? No, it's not a joke. Um, scientifically, there's, there's absolutely no difference between a mushroom and a toadstool. Uh, generally speaking, it's believed that mushrooms are edible and toadstools are, are poisonous. So the rule really is, if you don't know what it is, don't pick it and don't eat it uh, when it comes to, to mushrooms and toast. Autumn and winter tend to be the best times of year to find fungi. Uh, they prefer dark, cold, wet conditions and there are plenty of that around here in, in Clumber Park in the forest. So what we'll do is we'll look at the equipment the, that you need to photograph fungi, how and where to find it, and then finally, I'll take you through my approach to photographing fungi. So let's go. Okay, what I want to do now is look at the equipment that you'll need to photograph fungi. Uh, firstly, we'll have a look at cameras. Um, camera size does not matter. You can use anything from a smartphone all the way up to a DSLR. Uh, point to shoot cameras, bridging cameras, doesn't matter about the size of the camera, it's about how you use the camera itself. When it comes to lenses, I would suggest that if you have a macro capability on your smartphone or your point to shoot camera, then you should set it to macro. Myself personally again, because I shoot with a, a D850, Nikon D850 DSLR, I have two, cam uh, two lenses that I use. I have the Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter, and I also have a dedicated macro lens, which is a Sigma 105 millimeter. Fungi uh, prefer dark, dark places, as I said in the introduction. So you often find yourself in very poor light conditions, and you need to think about how you're going to light your subject. Um, one of the ways to do it is to use flash. Now, if you've got a pop-up flash facility on your camera, uh, I would recommend not to use that because uh, that light can be too harsh on your subject. What you're looking to do is use what is known as off-camera flash if you possibly can. Um, things like um, the light from a mobile phone or a small torch can allow you to illuminate your subject to photograph it. Myself personally again, I use what's known as a ring flash, which is here. Uh, attaches to my, my camera lens on my 105mm macro lens and what I do with that is that I set it so that the light itself can be changed, so you can set it to the left, you can set it to the right, or you can have it all around, and you also have a flash facility. So look at illuminating your, your subject using flash. Another thing you're going to have to um, look at because you're shooting at such slow shutter speeds is to look at shooting remotely, either by using a remote um, shutter device or setting the timer on your camera. And even on things like mobile phones, point to shoot cameras, you, you, you can, you'll find a, a self timer that you can set. Set it to about five seconds, and lets the camera settle down before it actually takes the picture. Because we're going to find ourselves in a dark, damp environment, light's going to be uh, pretty poor and pretty low. Um, so you have to look at supporting your camera somehow, because you're going to have to use slow shutter speeds to get the pictures that you're after. So there's two ways of doing that, but you need to get the camera low to the ground. What I have is a small miniature stand which gets the camera right level to the ground. And I also use a bean bag, which again gets low and level to the ground. So you need to support your camera and you need to get it as low to the ground as you possibly can. Finally, on the equipment um, that I recommend that you, you have for photographing fungi, I want to look at some what I call accessories. 
Now, fungi itself, their environment again, is very cluttered, backgrounds, debris, uh, all around you, the subject you're trying to photograph. So, what I've done is I've put a little kit together, fits into my pack, nice and small, and inside that I have a number, number of items. Small pair of scissors, small torch, uh, a duster, a blower, um, and a brush, and a pair of tweezers. And all that does is that allows me to clean up the environment that the, fung the fungi is in so that I can get a good clean shot of the fungi itself. And I'll show you that close up. Additionally, what I would recommend is having a little mat to put on the ground so that you can kneel on it. Because again, the fungi's environment is, is, is dirty, cold, damp and wet. As with all photography, uh, knowledge of your subject is absolutely vital. Um, as I've said before, up to about two years ago, I knew pretty much nothing about fungi. Um, my curiosity grew, for, grew, grew from there, and what I used to do, and I'll leave you um, a link here, is I have two reference books. I have a small pocket book, which I, I, I carry in my pack, and also I have a reference book, which I use at home, just to confirm uh, the name of the fungi that I photograph. So it's really vital that you know your subject. And again, I go back to the safety point about if you don't know what it is, don't pick it, don't take it away, and don't eat it. Okay, so far up to now, what we've looked at, we've looked at the equipment that you need to photograph fungi. We've looked at how and where to find fungi. And finally, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through the process that I follow uh, in how to photograph fungi. Uh, but first of all, what we have to do is find the fungi so that's the next job so as i previously stated uh, autumn is the best time of year to to find fungi um, woodland uh, is probably the best place and what we're looking for is access to to fungi and as i've said previously you're looking for dark dank, dark places uh, where the fungi will be fruiting so let's see what we can find you find them on dead decaying trees and branches, that's got to be about six and a half foot off the ground. And this one, it's got to be about 10, 10 to 12 feet off the ground. And lo and behold, and here we have some fungi. Um, so we've just come down to ground level. What we have is uh, known as a shaggy in cap. Uh, I actually prefer the name judge's wig uh, which I think you can see the, the resemblance to um, and there's another small one down here uh, it's a bit challenging today you can see this is actually moving about in the wind so uh, that's going to be challenging itself so things like shutter speed um, I might have to think about using flash so that uh, I can get uh, a nice still subject but there's the challenge it's cold it's wet it's windy uh, I think this is going to be a subject shaggy in cap or the judge's wig. Well, I'm afraid on this occasion, uh, nature wins. Uh, I just can't compete against the wind this morning, trying to, to get a picture of this beautiful specimen of a shaggy ink cap, or I said I prefer the judge's hat. But hey, that's the way it goes with nature photography. You ain't guaranteed that you're going to get perfect conditions. So, I'm going to have to try again. Okay, as I said before, uh, wind stop play, uh, I'll have to move locations. Uh, I've now found this location where there are a number of what we call bullets. I'll just point them out to you. All down at ground level. And this is where I'm going to set up to do my recording. Okay, what's my setup? Um, I'm shooting with a D850 and a Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Uh, set the camera onto a bean bag, and I've got it on a remote release. Settings-wise, uh, I've set it to I always shoot in manual uh, and raw, so that just helps me in my pro post-processing procedures. Uh, but I started off at shutter speed of 1 60 of a second f8 and auto iso i always shoot an auto iso and what i'll do is um 
try to keep the aperture around the f8, f10 area and if I need to change anything I'll really, what I'll do is I'll play around with the, the ISO just to try and maintain that shutter speed and aperture um, but one often cancels out the other so just keep an eye on them so what I'll do is I'm set to manual focus so I'll put out my LED screen uh, put it on live view and then what I'll do is I will zoom in onto the mushroom itself and then manually focus to make sure that uh, I'm happy with the, the, the image and then I'll take the shot with the remote. So let's see how this turns out. Steady the camera, compose it so that the mushrooms are upright as possibly as you can. Set the focus, I'm at 160 per second, f8 and ISO 400. ISO 400 doesn't bother me particularly because in my post processing I should be able to deal with that. So I'm happy with that, so I'll just take the picture. Here's that picture now. Now, looking at the picture, I can see that there is a distraction at the bottom left hand side of the, the smaller of the two mushrooms. So what I'll do is I'll remove that. Okay, check, recheck the, the composition again. Recheck the focus. Right there, happy with that, take the shot. And that's how I set up to photograph fungi. Three tips are, think about your background, try and get as clutter free as you possibly can. Have a look at the immediate area around the fungi itself. If you need to tidy it up and um, remove distractions. I mean, today's a windy day, I've had leaves blowing in um, all over the place as I'm actually photographing. I'm sure you can see that in, the, in this video. And then finally, tip number one, as I am now, get down low to get the photograph and the image that you want. So what I'll do now is I'll leave you with the images I've taken of this today. And then what I'll do is I'll leave you with what I consider to be some of my favourite um, fungi images. this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph fungi. I've thoroughly enjoyed making it and, and yet again in my journey into discovering about nature, fungi is an absolutely fascinating world and once you start looking into it the more fascinating it gets. If you liked the video could I ask you to hit the like button? If you'd like to see more like this then can I ask you to subscribe to my channel Kevin Hartley Photography. It doesn't cost anything, it's completely free up here. And until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.